Welcome to Real Conversations, exploring the meaning behind the music. Hi, I'm Robert Brzezinski. And I'm Jeannie Kataoka. And together, we're having Real Conversations with your favorite New Thought artists. Join us as we take a deep dive into the inspiration and meaning behind the music of New Thought. Our guests are ready to share stories from their spiritual journey and creative process with you. Real Conversations is a chance to look behind the curtain and connect with your favorite New Thought artists. So let's dive right in. Real Conversations, exploring the meaning behind the music. Well, hello, dear ones. Robert Brusinski with you again today. And this program is called Real Conversations. This is an opportunity that I get, and I'm so grateful I get these opportunities, to sit down with artists that I believe are making a real difference in the world that really are bringing their oneness into expression in service to this great and weird thing we're calling a world that works better for everyone or a world that works for everyone so i'm grateful you're with us today and today is our very first episode and i'm really really excited because i've got one of the most amazing people i know on the planet at this point to get to speak with for a while here today he's a singer he's a songwriter uh, an amazing pianist. I've had the chance to work with him on a couple of small projects so far, and, and I look forward to even greater collaborations with this person. So um, let me just quit gushing and uh, bring forward Mr. Gary Lynn Floyd. I just love his music. I'm so excited to have this conversation to introduce him to you in a better way. So Gary, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Robert. I'm honored to be here with you today. This is awesome. With your first first one, yeah. So awesome. all right, let, let's have some fun and um, so, just start. Tell us a little bit about you, Gary. I mean, where did this all get started? How did you? I mean, a lot of people have deep, deep roots in music, but where did you get started with singing? And how did you find the piano? And give us just a little bit of your of your history. I uh, I found a piano when I was four years old. And I was, uh, of course, I don't remember this, but I was picking out melodies. My sister was taking piano lessons and she would practice all day. And I would go in as a four-year-old and pick out the melody of the song that she was playing. And I think that the song was actually Tijuana Taxi, which is not a, it's not an easy melody like, you know, Mary Had a Little Lamb or something. Um, so I, uh, I started playing my mom called the piano teacher and said uh i have this four-year-old that's not banging on the piano he's actually playing music what do i do with them so <laughs> he started me with lessons and uh i i started singing in in southern baptist church i was born in houston texas and i grew up in conroe in in church singing every sunday and wednesday and uh i had my first role in the church play called Sam, which was about the Good Samaritan. I played Sam, <laughs> which is kind of cool because I've tried to carry that theme through my life. And um, I wrote my first song when I was 14 at Glorietta Baptist Encampment in New Mexico. Wow. And it was a song called Friends. And it was about the friends that I had met there. And I, um, I think that was the first time that I really felt the power of music and that if I couldn't say something out of my mouth speaking, I could put it in a song. And that's basically been kind of my songwriting my whole life is, is writing out those moments sometimes that I can't get out any other way. Yeah, the other way. Wonderful. Great. So starting to write music at 14 and, you know, I know, and we've shared a little bit pre uh, previously, the arc of your muse of your professional career is pretty closely tied to the journey of your spiritual life and the arc of your spiritual journey. And so yeah, they're inseparable for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so at 14, you start to find uh, your, your writing voice, let's call it. Right. And uh, so keep us going with the narrative. How's this develop into a career? Um, about that same time, my sister Leanne was looking through Campus Life magazine and she found an ad for 
an event called the Christian Artist Seminar in Estes Park, Colorado, and they were having a national talent competition for young upcoming Christian artists. And uh, so I put in an application and I went uh, and participated and won the national talent competition. And so I, one of the prizes was to do a record. It's an old LP with an eight track. Um, it wasn't anything I had written. You know, I hadn't really written any music. I, you know, I did all covers that first record. And then uh, because of that, started to get invited to sing in different Baptist churches around. And so I, um, you know, that was kind of the beginning of having a career. So I, I just kind of started when I was 14, 15 years old, wow. different churches and uh, retreats, and, you know, kind of what I've come full circle because I'm doing the same thing now. Right. After a long journey in between of a, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Exactly. And, and we're going to talk about that long journey. And, and that's really because you know, this program, Real Conversations, it's not about just throwing softballs to people and saying, you know, and we're not here to just promote your music. Yes, I want people to know about your music and your songs. We're going to talk about individual songs. But I really want to get into the, the journey that shaped you into the artist that you are today. Because what I know is, so here you are a young adult being groomed and primed and prepared for a national career in, in, within and around the Christian tradition and the Christian faith, but that doesn't exactly follow through. Uh, no. And it, you know, uh, I, yeah. I, I, I wrote music all through the rest of uh, high school. I went to Baylor. Um, when I graduated from Baylor, I was signed to, by Chris Christian, um, who um, you may not know that name, but he's, he discovered Amy Grant and he worked with the Imperials and all. He was a big Christian uh, producer and songwriter. And so I, I signed a deal with him. I had an independent label deal. Um, and uh, so things were really looking up uh, yeah. in that world. And um, But uh, unfortunately, someone decided they wanted to share their perception of you with the world in a way that... Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I, wa I was outed when I was... After I got out of college and... Uh, oh God, looking back on it now, my perspective is a lot different because I realized that um, the intention was not bad on their part, although it's, you know, it's never a good thing or, or really um, life affirming to divulge information about someone that, you know, they're not willing or haven't come to terms with themselves. But I know it was kind of out of that Christian love intention of just being concerned about me from that perspective. Right. Uh, but yeah, I, I would have eventually come out of the closet anyway, but I, I was kind of nudged out by well-meaning people. Um, and I went to play at a revival and the pastor brought me into his, at the end of the revival brought me into his office. And I thought he was just going to thank me and give me my check. And, and he said, uh, you know, someone in my congregation has said that, uh, has told me that you're involved in sexual immorality and you have to either stop what you're doing or I'll make sure that everybody knows. And so I was at this, you know, I was in this really bizarre place because I was very connected at that point. So I told, I was booked for, uh, some youth camps that summer and I said, I'll finish up the youth camps that I'm booked at and, um, and then I'll quit. And I did mm -hmm. and went into a, you know, that began a really dark night of my soul of then in my early mid twenties to have to really begin to figure out who I really was um, and not what other people thought of me or said about me or even the things that I had been taught up until that point, I had to question everything. Yeah. 
I'm interested. Do you still sing any of the songs from that era? Oh God, um, no, not by in, not by intention. I don't think it just is. Uh, it's just not where my spirituality is now. And like I said, you know, my music is, has always been so connected to um, my spiritual life too that it's, it, I have to sing things that feel right and are authentic to me and that just is not uh, it's shifted mm, gotcha right on. in a good way it's all inclusive but th those some of those things are a little um yeah just not where i am right now mm. yeah gotcha now i know that uh we're gonna i want to talk a bit about some of the music um and so but before we can get there i'm also just interested so if we mid 20s and now the career that you've been working towards so hard so so dedicated is sort of being pulled away from you um, oh at that point oh definitely right. and i uh i quit singing in churches um and that was a, kind of a mutual thing i don't think i would have been invited back to a lot of the places that i had played and so i wound up at an open mic night, a friend of mine said, hey, there's an open mic night at this gay cabaret <laughs> called John L's in Dallas, and you should go. And I went, I played the open mic night, and I think that that night uh, the owner offered me a Tuesday night. And so it was seamless. You know, music, I think music saved me because I was able to immediately plug in somewhere else. And I had to learn a lot of new music, you know, I only knew Christian music, but it, it, that continued. And so I, that was what I was able to just pour myself into um, and continue to play music. I don't know what would have happened if I had just not played anymore, but I just had to kind of shift the focus and realize that music, um, you know, when I was 14 years old, I remember that I had, you know, in Baptist church, they, they stress having a, like, if you feel a calling, you know, come down if you feel called to the ministry. And I was called, but it was not a calling into like a, a what I would consider like a normal ministry of music minister. I mean, minister music at a church or something, but it was more the calling to use my music to um, do what I could to lift people up and to, um, raise the vibration even back then and so uh i realized you know i kept playing music and even in the piano bars and the cabarets that i played um people were always drawn to the songs that were that that uh landed a little deeper within them right um you know i never have been the guy that's had people up dancing but more, normally you know I make people cry sometimes, <laughs> but you know, I, I, uh, it always seems to touch a, a, you know, a deeper place. Well, I know you make me cry quite often, mm. uh, listening well, to music because it is authentic. And as a listener and someone that, uh, I don't carry a tune, but man, I love listening to them and your music has that deeper meaning to it. And from my perspective, it's pretty evident mm, uh, that that's you. happening. So, so how do you how do you find new thought? And where was there and was there a decision to start writing more towards a different audience? Um, I uh, here's okay. I I'll answer the one about writing toward a different audience. I didn't write us from the. Uh, from the time that I, that I uh, quit playing in churches, started playing in the clubs, I didn't write another song for probably, I'd say almost eight, nine years. Wow. And I moved to, uh, I eventually moved to Venice Beach, California with my partner at the time, really just to start over and dive in and, and really find out who I was. And I started writing music again but I was writing music from a different place that was much more new thought, even before I realized, even before I was introduced to new thought, uh, I wrote a song called walk on water about, um, 
you know, being lifted up from the, from the dark time in your life and feeling like that you could walk on water. And my songs just began to kind of flow out in a new, in a new way, but they still were spiritual to me, but not necessarily um, science of mind or new thought or uh, um, anything that I knew to define it by. Mm. But I was playing, I, I went back to Dallas. I had been playing um, back in the clubs that I was playing in and Michael got, was playing the piano bar um, along with me way back in the day. And uh, he would ask me to come, come and fill in for him at CSL Dallas on a Sunday. And at first I'm like, I don't want to do, you know, it's a church. I don't think I want to, you know, play churches anymore. And, uh, uh, and he kept at me and, and I started to fill in for him at, uh, at CSL Dallas and just on the music team, I wasn't paying that much attention, but I knew that it was a community that felt good. It, you know, the, uh, all the music I loved, it seemed to kind of settle in with me spiritually. And, um, but then it wasn't until years later when I met uh, Danny, who's my partner, and he had been involved in New Thought years ago and was asking me, what's this? Because I began playing at CSL on a regular basis as their, uh, just as a piano player on their music team. He's like, what's this church that you're playing? And, you know, I said, CSL Dallas. And he came back to me with the book, this thing called you. Mm. And, you know, I opened it up and it just completely, uh, it completely shifted me. I re it really resonated with me of the, um, you know, to help me kind of dive a little deeper into who I am and the, that I am the essence of, of God um, expressing itself in the world and what that means and the responsibility that it, it that I can take to change, um, to change how I experience my life. Yeah. Fabulous. That's, uh, that's a wonderful connection and synchronicity. So for listeners, I want to fill in a couple of the cracks that may be uh, a couple of the pieces of information there. Uh, Gary talks about, talks about Reverend Michael Gott, who is currently the senior minister at Unity of Houston, and but at the time was music director at the Center for Spiritual Living in Dallas. Which and before that, yeah, I yeah, I didn't put that all together that clearly, but and before that, I knew him from the world of piano bar cabarets in Dallas. Right. Um, so my my relationship and friendship with him goes back a long way goes back a very, very long way. So, um, all right, we're going to take a quick break here, folks, and let Gary have a sip of water and catch his breath. We'll hear a little bit from our sponsors and come right back with you in just a moment. Hang on. Today's episode is made possible by a generous donation from Daily Spirit Callings. A daily email and podcast, affirmation, inspiration, and call to action delivered directly to you every day. Learn more about Daily Spirit Callings at spiritevolving.com. All right, folks, we're back with a very special conversation with Gary Lynn Floyd. This has been an amazing opportunity to have a real conversation about what it's like to not only grow up as a musician, but be outed as a gay musician at a time when Gary's career looked like it was about to really take off uh, in the Christian world, but finds himself finding new thought. And through a series of synchronistic events, uh, lands in uh, the CS in the Center for Spiritual Living in Dallas and is working in their music team. And it's about that time if I'm correct, you start writing music more towards a New Thought audience. And I want to play a snippet here from one of my favorite songs and uh, have you share a little bit with us about this. So. Give me your tired, your poor and of masses Yearning to breathe free Come now before Another moment passes Bring them to me I Lift my lamp beside the golden door Do it to the least of these you Suffering, look no further. 
look no further. And I love the song. I love the, uh, the message. And to me, that's always sounded uh, a little more like a uh, growing out of your Christianity. It, it feels to me like it has quite a few what could easily be perceived as Christian phraseology and terminology. And so can you speak a little to us? What was it like to start writing again and have this deep, rich, personal history with with God that now is pretty dramatic? It would seem pretty different. Yeah, you know, it's... Uh... It's very different, but it's, you know, this song uses a lot of the same, uh, like, do it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. Um, uh, it, it originally was written for an organization called Art for Peace and Justice, and they, they were doing an immigration uh, emphasis and wanted a song for that and wanted it to be based on the Emma Lazarus poem, uh, The New Colossus at the... Um, at the foot of the Statue of Liberty. Mm. And for me, uh, when it says, look no further, it is I, to me, that is that part of us that is the part of the greater I am consciousness. And that we are all, when it says, do it to the least of these, you've done it unto me, is us each taking responsibility to be that presence on the planet of Christ consciousness. Um, and for me, that's the bridge. And so this was an early song that, that um, I was still moving uh, into an understanding of more of a metaphysical understanding of Jesus and the Christ consciousness um, being more, uh, more part of each one of us and what that meant for me to step into that in my life and become that uh, that presence as much as I could mm, yeah and if I'm correct it's right around that same time that you're creating um, another what I believe is iconic song of you Christ in me Christ in you yeah yeah because I had been I had been I'd begun to hear a lot of um, namaste at CSL and namaste the God in me sees the God in you and um, when I wrote that, when I wrote Christ to me, Christ in you, it was that energy of the God in me sees a God in you. The Christ in me sees a Christ in you. Um, a lot of, seems to me, some new thought people weren't as comfortable with the term Christ because a lot of us have come out of that Christian tradition. And there's a, um, you know, we've had a difficulty with that term. And I was... Um, kind of reclaiming it for myself say okay i can say the christ in me sees the christ in you and acknowledge the christ in me as um i don't know if it's a former christian i mean what would that be i um, uh, you know i don't know what i would necessarily still call myself a christian uh yeah i don't know right it's fabulous. There is a, uh, there's this long running debate in uh, that from the day I stepped into a, a religious science community, there has always been this question, are we Christian? Are we not Christian? Yeah. And I find it that life isn't that simple. There isn't, it isn't an either or question. It has to be a both and question because so many people, um, I've heard it said numerous times, right? Religious science, new thought, it's where you go when you're a recovering Catholic or when you feel you're, and that's a human experience and human perception. All of your Baptist upbringing, all of that background has to influence who you are as a being. Right. And as you've shared yourself, your music and the history, the arc of your music is documenting your personal experiences. And I personally believe that part of the reason you're so beloved is because your personal experience, that you're so good at sharing what that was for you, that it touches every, everybody else. 
that everybody can say, wow, it's so relatable. I want to play a little bit of Christ in me, Christ in you uh, for everyone. So they, uh, if you haven't heard this, folks, and this is, again, in, from my perspective, one of uh, Gary's all-time greats. So let's listen to it. <music> Christ in me sees the Christ in you. Everyone's a chosen one, the many and the few. All together now, it takes two. The Christ in me and the Christ in you. To know love is to be loved and I know love will stay alive if the Christ in me sees the Christ in you to know love is to be love oh how beautiful it's uh, thank you I, I tell you I I do get lost in your music almost every day. Uh, and the days I forget are days that are just like, wow, where, where was my Gary fix today? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, to, and, and I want to kind of continue. So here you are, you're moving a little bit more into new thought. You're starting to write into new thought. And then along comes a song um, that is another one of my favorites. I'd love to hear a little bit more about it. Music and the meaning. Mm. I, w I was, uh, my really good friend, Glenn Morshower was scheduled to do an internet radio show and he couldn't do it. So he asked me if I'd fill in for him. Uh, it was a woman named Helen Wu. And um, we were playing my music and we were talking about, uh, about my songs. And there was a woman in the chat room, her name's Mary Similuka. And she um, was working with uh, uh, a director on a film, on a documentary about Viktor Frankl. And Viktor Frankl wrote Man's Search for Meaning. And they were working on a documentary. His grandson was directing the documentary. His name is Alex. And it was called Victor and I. And they were looking for a theme song for the film. And they hadn't, hadn't gotten one. And she liked my music. And so she asked me if I'd be interested in writing a song for them. And so I went and bought... I think I had read Man's Search for Meaning maybe in college, but I went and bought the book and read it again. And this is my, uh, my interpretation of, of that book. You know, he, uh, Victor Frankl says that if we can establish a why, then we can endure any how. Like if you can find a meaning in what it is that you're going through, um, then you can withstand anything that life throws at you. You know, he was a Holocaust survivor and saw a lot of people uh, die and he observed the people that didn't. And he, he observed that most of those people were able to keep some kind of, uh, uh, of hope alive that what would happen when they got out or when they survived, you know, they, um, they were able to put some sort of meaning in what they were going through. Mm, yeah. Well, let's take a listen to that then as well and give everyone a chance to catch uh, a taste of music in the meaning. <laughs> Start of something new, I think it's coming into view. Don't ask me how, but I can see clearly now. Leaving my footprints in the sand, too soon to tell where I may land. Now I why I can bear anyhow. I can hear it. Destiny is calling me to give in to the rhythm, let it carry me away. Dance with the audacity, find triumph in the tragedy. All my quest for answers, I won't rest until I say, now that hope 
nothing more like you have music in the meeting gary lynn floyd that is just an amazing song and what i love about your music is you don't seem to get too stuck in any one genre um you know if you do a search on youtube folks you'll you'll find a a great long form p uh a commercial to a a one-man show you did when oh harry uh, yeah and uh and you know, search it out, folks, and listen to it. it. There's a couple of little clips there, but it, it to me, it just demonstrates in it the the range of which your musical talents have roamed over the years. There are you can see, you can kind of sense the hey, I'm going to go over here and try this, and I'm going to go over here. Yeah, I uh, I spent a lot of years in piano bars and cabarets. I I sang with a uh, jazz vocal trio called Wise Guys for a while. I did a, a lot of musical theater in Dallas for about 10 years. I, I almost exclusively did musical theater. So, I, yeah, I, I do a lot of different things. Um, and they're all, it's kind of cool because whether it's spiritual or not, it's, uh, I, I kind of feel a spiritual connection to all of it. Yeah. I once asked one of my, first teachers you know what's your spiritual practice and he looked at me said what's ever in front of me yeah and, and at first as a newer student i thought that was a cop-out mm -hmm. like, well if everything's then how could anything be spiritual right if, how is it supposed to be special if, it, if it's everything and it, it came to, and it took me a while to get it but when i make every aspect of my day part of my personal spiritual practice when i'm bringing my spiritual self my true authentic self to whatever it is that's in front of me then yes whatever's in front of me can be my spiritual practice that in that moment and it sounds to me like you've reached that place in your music as well and and in who you are as an artist that every creation gets to be an experience a spiritual experience right yeah and i finally uh i finally understand what my gifts are and what my what i do uh you know uh, as an artist you can't do everything um but i i realized that uh what my strengths are and what i um what my what i was put here to to do and be and just being more at peace with um, just being me, you know, not trying to do anything else or, um, you know, become anything, but just, there's a really cool book that I, ha that I've been reading called the power of awareness. And one of my spiritual practices right now, he says to assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Yeah. And it sounds kind of airy, but uh, it assume, uh, feel what it will feel like, if I already was what I think I should be and realize that I am that already. And if I can feel what that feels like in the present moment, it shifts and changes the things that come in because, you know, my uh, consciousness about it is different. Yes. Exactly. You know, and that's, that's kind of the key to everything I think is your individual consciousness and choosing what you're, uh, what you're going to let things mean to you. Ernest Holmes calls that called that uh, mental equivalent, uh, yeah. creating the mental equivalent in our minds of the life we desire to live, and yeah. the life we desire to have for ourselves, and uh, and uh, and we could go on and on and on about that, folks, for right. days, and days and days. But I want to get back into the music, and I want to keep us into the music. Uh, another one of my personal favorite songs, and I think it's. Uh, I think this holds true for a lot of people I've spoken with about your music is Unbound. And you and I have chatted about this a little bit. I want to share a clip for, for the people listening and then share a little bit more about it. But this is a song that's taken on different form over the years and has actually changed and transformed, uh, I think, as a direct, direct ref, as we've spoken before, a direct reflection of your journey. So let's listen to a little bit of Unbound here, give people a, a taste. Unfold your heart 
relax your senses Feel every part You ain't got a thing to fear Looks like love is growing here So take your guard and let it down Go deeper still until you come unwound great pleasure of being here together sitting with Gary in what we call real conversations and we've been talking about his music his journey as a as an artist and his journey as a spiritual being so tell us a little bit more Gary how does uh, Unbound come into the world I was living in Nashville uh, and I was at a time in my life it was it was in a pretty at the end of a pretty dark time and I, um, it was a song about letting go. I had begun to practice yoga a little bit. And I, I, I found this book called uh, Naked Buddhism by David Data. And um, I, it was just, uh, it was a time of letting go of a lot of expectation that I have of myself, who I thought I was supposed to be. And it was just trying to breathe through it and, um, I was living in a in an apartment that was on the porch of a house that had you know four other guys living in the other part of the house, and my little apartment was on the porch. It was right on Music Row, and uh, I was trying to get people to listen to my songs. And I was in my probably early late thirties. Actually, I think I was almost forty, and so it was a time when I was uh, there was a little desperation that I was feeling of of what am I going to do if you know, if what I think is supposed to happen doesn't happen. And, um, so it was just a, it was, it's a song about letting go of, of expectation of who you think, who you are supposed to be and, and just being at peace with, um, with who I am. Yeah. And that song has appeared in a couple of places in your catalog. It's shifted a little over time. Is yeah. that often with songs for you? Or? The first time it has ever happened. I, 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 uh, I recorded it originally um, on, on an album called Unbound. And then years later, I was doing a compilation of a lot of different projects and songs that people had liked over the years. And I brought that one back in and I just felt like it was time to uh, update it and, and uh, do a little different version of it. So Cool. Good, good, good. Well, thank you for sharing all that. And I, I'd like to shift just a little bit in the conversation. Uh, you, uh, you've gotten in, you've done some collaboration with other new thought artists now, and that's what I'd like to talk about. Um, you and who you are individually, from my perspective, has become very identifiable for me with new thought and Gary and his piano, Gary's voice, Gary's message and his piano. And then it seems, and then there's some, um, some collaboration that begins to happen. So how is it? Uh, and I've heard stories of, from other new thought artists of, you know, sitting in a writer in a practice room for the conferences or a retreat and people working out songs to work together, but help, as an artist, 
what's it like to and how do you get into something like to really collaborating on what i think is and we're going to talk show, share a song here in a minute but help me understand that a little bit more help us understand that. uh i love collaborating and um to get into it, I, most of the time it's just having a conversation with another singer songwriter and um, either setting up a, a writing session where we get in the same room and write uh, with technology today. We can write over Zoom, which is really great. Um, but uh, it's just I usually connect with uh, on a friendship level and then we, um, you know, we, we just talk about, OK, we, do we want to write a song and then get together and start a conversation? And normally that, that leads into, uh, into a song. Yeah. Is that what well, let's, let's listen to one of those collaborative efforts. This is something, um, I know you're very familiar with it. This is something you wrote with Robin Hackett and we hope, uh -huh. have, we hope to have Robin on the show here sometime. So we'll on one big family. Everybody get up on your feet See the light in everybody you meet Everybody get up on your feet See the light in everybody you meet Let us be reminded of who we've come to be We are love, we are one One big family, hey, hey, yeah, yeah Hey, 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 yeah, yeah. Everybody, get up on your feet. See the light in everybody you meet. Everybody, get up on your feet. See the light in everybody you meet. Let us be reminded of who we've come to be. We are love, we are one. family now earlier today you said that you know you often don't write music or that most of your music doesn't make people get up and dance uh -huh. uh, however there's no question that this song is purely about getting people up to dance and uh, is that something so is did robin kind of bring and move you to is how, how's it how do you move from uh you know, it just kind of organically happens. And with Robin, I love writing with Robin. And yes, we, uh, it just, depending on who you co-write with, then it takes on a different alchemy between the two people. And Robin and I just have a really great uh, chemistry together. And yeah, she brought in that, uh, that kind of dance energy. And, um, and then we, we just kind of rode with it. Gotcha. Cool. Well, I would love to uh, bring the two of you back together again to do that that song together again sometime. So we'll have to put that on the wish list of of, uh, of ideas. So. I love that. Perfect. And along the way, uh, most recently, you've created a great collaboration with Jamie Lula. And Jamie's a fairly well-known name around the New Thought Music circles. And... I, I had the pleasure to work with both of you at a retreat a few years back. And I remember when I first heard Floyd Lula, my first thought was, wow, two great voices that sound great together. Yeah, and, we have a, um, yeah. Can you share a little, how, how, how did that get started? How did you guys decide to, to and really you wrote not just a show, you wrote an album and a oh, song yeah. after that. And, uh, yeah. We uh we have a mutual friend Veronica Valles from Dallas, and she had been talking for I think probably a couple of years, maybe a year and a half, when I was still living in Dallas. Um, do you know Jamie Lula? Do you know Gary Lynn Floyd? And um, we just didn't meet, didn't meet, and it didn't line up. And then I moved to North Hollywood, um, and our friend Doug LeBeau invited both of us to be involved in a Teze service. And so we did the Teze, met that day, um, hit it off right away because, you know, we already felt like we knew one another with the, with the mutual friends that we had and people that, that said we should meet one another. And so we set up a writing uh, 
a writing session. I was going to go over and write with Jamie. And um, I had a melody that I was working with. I took it to him. I didn't know if it was an instrumental or if it was, uh, you know, if we would write lyrics to it. And we wrote a song called God in Everyone, which is one of my all-time favorites of any song that I've been a part of. And um, it was just an automatic, we just automatically hit it off. And I think we probably talked for two hours before we even started writing that day. And Jamie's just become like a brother to me. And uh, we have a great chemistry writing together as well. And we've written probably 20, 30 songs at this point. Um, There was one time we wrote three songs in one day, one time, you know, just kind of get in a zone and, uh, and compliment one another with what we bring to the table as writers. So it's, it's really fulfilling and wonderful to write with him. Mm, Yeah. And when you know something's, so you've got, someone saying you gotta you gotta get with jamie you gotta connect do you go and listen to other artists as like preparation of that or do you listen to other artists for inspiration what's on your playlist oh god yeah i love um i love listening to different artists i love matt nathanson you want to you want me to tell you the people that inspire me sure um i love matt nathanson um I think he's an incredible writer. Uh, who else do I listen to? I listen to so much diff- so many different people. Um, you caught me off guard here for a minute, so. <laughs> no um, so I'm blank. Yeah. Do um, so. Let's go back to like Floyd Lula. So you okay. now you know that. Wow. All right. I've got this. I'm going to be meeting with Jamie. Do you go and dig into his catalog and listen to his catalog, not uh, as a fan, but as a technician of how he creates his music, of the grooves that he tends to use or the places he tends to? Uh, not, not some, I know, I mean, I knew Jamie's music uh, and had listened to him and love. Um, there's a healing going on and, um, just a, a lot of his catalog, but I, I think that I probably just went into the, uh, into the session, uh, trying to be fresh and see what, um, you know, knowing what I bring, knowing what he brings and then try not to have too much expectation, but let it kind of organically unfold. And, um, yeah. and it's really kind of interesting because the, the musically what we write together is different than either one of us would write uh, individually. I think, you know, it, it has. We've created a kind of a unique sound that's just Floyd Lula, right? Yes, and I would agree with that. And uh, for listeners, uh, check out NewThoughtRadio.net, and you'll hear a whole bunch of Floyd Lula because we play them all the time. We play both of your individual stuff and the Floyd Lula stuff quite a bit. Um, it's a great, fun album. It, your first album was recorded live. It was actually your premiere show, if I remember correctly. Um, we, we we did a big old leap of faith, and we decided to record our very first gig. We did it at Kulak's Woodshed, and uh, yeah, yeah, and we came up with the with the record. So, and we're looking, we're working uh, on some new music and trying to get in the studio and um, get some of that recorded this year for sure. Good. Good, good, good. Do you hear? So you heard that here, folks. A new Floyd Lula album is in the works somewhere, and uh, we'll be sure to be on the pre-order list for that when it happens. So yeah. you mentioned new music, and that's one of the other things I want to talk about here today. Uh, before we wrap up, I know you've got some a whole busy, busy schedule. So, but but before we have to wrap up, uh, deeper field of energy. It's your new single. Um, you're going to pre- you've premiered that at a Silomar just recently uh, at a SOAR conference and brought that publicly. Um, I feel so grateful you let me listen to it a few days before you gave it to the world. And, and uh, it's a powerful song. And my sense is it's poised to become part of not just your repertoire, but become one of your standards. Mm. Um, so before we listen to it, um, share a little bit with us. What's what's the meaning in the music for deeper field of energy? 
the inspiration for this song came uh, after my mom made her transition. And I was kind of waiting and waiting for a song, you know, okay, I'm, I'm sure that something's going to come. And, uh, and this, this idea started to come to me of, uh, you know, with my Christian upbringing, there were a lot of songs about what happens after you, uh, after you make your transition. Most of them, you know, they're all heaven and the uh, streets of gold and the pearly gates. And there's, you know, there's a, there are a lot of songs about what happens at that time. Um, but this is just, this was my uh, interpretation of what I think happens from my spiritual perspective now. And it's kind of, it's dedicated to my mom and Danny's dad, um, Etika Luckett, who's a dear friend of ours that made her transition the last couple of years, Nora James, Mary Simaluka, um, a lot of people that have gone, are, have gone before us on this journey that's the next thing after we leave our bodies. And so it's a song about um, what I think that transition might be like. Mm, gotcha. Let's give it a, a listen. This is your field of energy. Jerry Lynn Floyd, brand new music here on Real Congress. <laughs> That's what I want. I, that's how I want people to remember me when I do that transition <laughs> is that I don't have any regrets. I, you know, everything leads to where you are. And, um, yeah. yeah. And I also like the line about, um, I'll find my wings and learn to fly from a free fall, you know, just right. dive into that. And, um, yeah, yeah. very real dimension. And, he, and again, this song feels so authentic that it it's it's coming through you. It's influenced by your creative skill and 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 wherewithal, and it really reflects a maturity in your journey from the early days where and uh, and this whole conversation we've had today. It's almost as if you have to end it that you have to get to that song yeah. that 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 reflection and the ability to consider that next great experience of life and living beyond the human realm, that eternality of the soul it's 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 real 
and then, uh, that's part of what makes it so why I'm so in love with this song already. Oh God, thank you. I played, it, I played it for my wife, yes, last night, and she's just like, oh God, yes, I, she's in love with it already too. Oh, nice. Um, so, um, so here we are. But, a, a mature new thought artist who's making mean who's bringing meaning to the community to the world we know you've got it in you to be a you know big time rock and roll star i guess uh so what's the big vision gary what's calling you further well i'm uh i'm excited about the future right on the horizon i have a couple more singles that are in the pipeline i'm excited about deeper field of energy and then i got a couple more songs coming uh just keeping rise raising the vibration of the planet through the music and just doing my part to uh uplift people and i'm excited i just um uh, i just accepted an artist in residency at the center for spiritual living in reno and i'll be there part of the time and then i'll tour other parts of the, of the year and um and then i'm about to remount uh, my show, When Gary Met Harry, that we talked about a little bit earlier uh, up here in Reno. And just excited about continuing to have the opportunity to share my music and write music and uh, connect with people. Oh, fabulous. That sounds great. Well, now I have a, bit, a reason to go visit Reno. And <laughs> I trust those of you listening will find a great excuse to go visit Reno as well and get a chance to see Gary, whether he's there or if we bring him to a town near you, he comes to a town near you, make sure you get a chance to get out and see Gary's message. So one final question. You may not be able to answer this. You may not want to answer it. It's kind of like a lot like, you know, who's your favorite child, which is your favorite child. <laughs> but what's your favorite Gary Lynn Floyd song? Um... I think I'd probably have to go with Unbound. Unbound. Unbound and I do and deeper field of energy, but I think Unbound just because Unbound was a pivotal shift for me. Um and uh yeah, I think that's probably my favorite. Gotcha. Well, thank you. And thank you so much for for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us. I uh, appreciate the fact that you're here and uh and that you've had a chance to, and we've gotten a chance to know you as an artist a bit better today as well. So for everyone out there listening, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Robert Brzezinski. We've been having a real conversation with Gary Lynn Floyd. And I tell you, I want to invite you back again and again, Gary. I hope, we'll, I trust we'll get a chance to do this again. And uh, we're going to keep featuring your music. And, uh, and we'll be there listening. So thank you, Robert. Thanks for everything that you're doing. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Peace and blessings. Thank you. Thank you for listening to real conversations, exploring the meaning behind the music. Real conversations is produced by the new thought radio network, sharing a vibration of love, positivity, and empowerment through a variety of media streams. Learn more on the web at newthoughtmedianetwork.org. Listen to past episodes of Real Conversations on the podcast page at newthoughtradio.net. Until next time, peace and blessings. Go forth and prosper.